Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can add temperature dependent thermal expansion to the PolyUmod TMV model. So to do this, I'm just going to start from scratch. Here's an empty window of M calibration. I'm going to add some experimental data. I'm going to go to add virtual test. And I'm going to add some data that comes with the software for CPVC. And there's some data at many different strain rates here. I'm going to remove some of the repeated tests just for a simplicity here. So this is the data that I want to use. This is at 293 uh, Kelvin. That's the temperature. It's going to save this. And here is here is the data. Now I'm going to set up a, a polyumod TMV model to this experimental data. And I'm going to select the, the uh, thermoplastic isotropic option and I'm going to activate thermal expansion here linear thermal expansion I'm going to say yes and then for the thermal expansion coefficient for now I'm going to make that zero so I'm not going to search for it I'm not going to have it active during the calibration then I'm just going to go ahead and perform the material model calibration And I decided to stop the calibration after about three minutes. The fit is pretty good. If I let it run a little longer, it probably will fit the data even better. But here's the, the problem, right? I have a, cal a calibrated material model to this temperature, and uh, this looks really good. I'm going to now, the goal is to create a temperature-dependent TMV model with thermal expansion that expand depends on the temperature. So I'm going to export this material model at this point. I'm going to export it as a polyumod external file and I save it to the same directory here and then I'm going to create another calibration for a different temperature and in this case I don't have another temperature uh, data but so I'm going to change this experimental data by multiplying the stress values by say 80 percent to get a slightly lower stress and that's what I'm going to use for my second uh, temperature as this demonstration. Then I'm going to save this as a different file name for simplicity. I'm going to say that this pro assume that this is 350 deg degrees uh, Kelvin here. Uh, of course, the material model is not fitting the temperature, the new data that I generated. So I'm going to perform this calibration on this new data uh, one more time. And in this case, for demonstration purposes, I stopped this calibration pretty early on. It sort of matches the data reasonably well, but that's not the point of the demonstration anyway. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to save this file, and I'm going to export this material model again as a uh, polyumod external file. And I save that to the same directory as before. Then what I will do is I will clear all data in this M calibration window and then I'm going to create now the point here is the master temperature dependent uh, TMV model with thermal expansion and that's an option you can do in different ways. One way is to if you use ANSYS mecha mechanical you can specify the parameters for each temperature in mechanical and that's a very easy way to create a temperature dependent TMV model. Uh, if you're using Abacus or some of the other finite element solvers, that feature may not be available where the, the FE solver can interpret the parameters. In that case, you would use the PolyUmod multi-temperature model. So this is the combined multi-temperature feature that I will use here. I'm clicking on this. I'm going to select these two files that I generated when I exported the calibrated models. I say OK, and they show up here as a template. I can say OK mm -hmm. here. Um, and here is the parameters now. The next thing, of course, is we want to, at this point, probably look at thermal expansion as well. 
Uh, it's going to save this uh, file. And then I'm going to uh, just run it the way it is. And but if I say try to run this, there is no data available. M calibration will generate a, a test case for us. It's just a temp, uh, a, a exemplar virtual test case of attention test. So this is what it would look like. Now, what I wanted to do is I will look into the idea of thermal expansion here. We can specify the thermal expansion coefficients at this point here. One is here, alpha and temperature F. And then we have a second one here, alpha and temperature F. They are uh, different, they're both zero, but we want them to be different. So at the higher temperature, we want to say that uh, this is say 2E minus five. And then at the lower temperature, this will be say 1E minus five. And in the multi-temperature framework, this should be the same as experimental data that we used, which is 293, and this should be 350 to get the properties that we calibrated. So yeah, I can now do something interesting. I can uh, turn off this uh, load case here. I'm going to create a thermal expansion load case within M calibration to examine these. So I'm going to do a virtual load case. I'm going to do a stress rate of zero. So I'm going to say keep the stress constant. And I'm going to use ramp temperature. Uh, and I want to do that for 60 seconds. And I want to ramp temperature from 293 to say 380, uh, something like that. And then I'm going to save this. And if I run this one, the stress looks like it's zero. But this is not the plot we want to look at. We want to look at, probably want to look on temperature on the x-axis. And here is temperature on the y-axis with the uh, strain. And then we can see that the strain is initially here, goes from this value, and then it goes up here. So that's the thermal expansion that will be temperature dependent in this material. So this is the final temperature dependent, multi-temperature dependent material model with different thermal expansion coefficients. I can export this material model into whatever FE solver I'm interested in at this point, and that will work in your material model, in your finite element solver at different temperatures. So that's one way to do this. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.